Bugatti's new penthouse in Dubai will have elevators for your car. The automator's first branded residence will be located in the city's bustling busy city. This is a major trend amongst automakers, especially those of the luxury market, such as Bugatti, Porsche, and the list goes on. These automakers have recently taken to the real estate market in order to diversify their portfolio of income and operations. Bugatti is the latest one on the scene, and of course we're very much aware that Bugatti is well known all across the planet for being a luxury supercar manufacturer. Bugatti was previously owned outright by the Volkswagen Group of Germany. The common misconception of the Bugatti company is that it's of a German or Italian origin. In fact, it is French. And so it's known as the French Marquis, and they've decided to build the first branded residence in the heart of Dubai. Conceived in a partnership with Emirati developer Bin Hati, the sculptural skyscraper will reportedly bring the breeze and feel of French Riviera. This new miraculously beautiful residence by Bugatti, built by Bin Hati, will house 171 Riviera mansions and 11 Sky Mansion penthouses that will each be finished to the standard of a multi-million dollar hypercar. Residents will also have access to an exclusive members-only club and a throng of glitter amenities. There will even be a garage to the penthouse cars live. Because, well, how else are you supposed to get into your Chiron? Or perhaps one of my favorite, the Devo. Now, all residents will offer spacious living areas adorned with the finest material selection the world has to offer, according to Ben Hardy. The abodes will also showcase a subtle palette and sleek furnishing in line with understated French luxury. The layout of each penthouse will be customized to the owner, of course. The top tier pads will also come with that convenient car lift. Now, this is certainly a smart move by Bugatti, business-wise, for the economy of their business. Branded residents have suddenly started booming in the last few years. In fact, the sector has grown by 150% over the past decade. Now, brands such as Aston Martin, Porsche have entered the real estate industry. So too has fashion houses such as Fendi and Bulgari. German car brands such as Porsche work with Diza Development to create the first residential real estate project, Porsche Design Tower in Miami, which opened in 2017. This is a 60-story skyscraper that contains automated car elevators that allows residents to drive their vehicle into their apartments and a vehicle concierge offering regular car maintenance, tire changes and washing. Porsche currently operates a hotel and office tower in Stuttgart, appropriate name Porsche Design Tower Stuttgart. The list goes on from here. How about the Bentley resident, the USA, by Serga Cides Architects, Bentley and Desert Development. Also working with Desert Development, Bentley and Cesare, they've designed a skyscraper as the car company's first branded residential project. The building will be located almost next door to the Porsche Design Tower. This is in Miami Beach, with both brands owned by the Volkswagen Group, of course. The deeper question that we'd like to understand is whether or not skyscrapers make economical sense. Do these gigantic buildings rising into the sky actually make sense from a business point of view? Or is it just simply a way for a company to help break even or to make their brand more outstanding for public perception? This is a worthy question, of course, and that's why we want to have a look at data that might support this idea. The interesting thing that we must first take a look at is the common height of tallest buildings being completed each year versus the height of the world's tallest building. Year after year, the tallest buildings are getting higher and higher and higher. Some cities that are known to do this best, of course, are New York, Dubai and Abu Dhabi, of course. These cities slash countries are known to build enormous skyscrapers and year after year, it is constantly increasing. Recently, the Jeddah Tower in Saudi Arabia has commenced development. For a brief period of time, development was actually paused on the next tallest building of the world. And now it is suddenly restarted. 
and they're in competition to create the tallest building in the world. And of course, the UAE has an answer to that. The UAE has already started working on their next tallest building in the world. So they're now in direct competition with each other. Whoever gets there first and whoever stays there the longest will reap the most beneficial rewards economically and attracts the most tourism. Till this day, the Burj Khalifa is still the world's tallest building by a long shot. But with the Jeddah Tower under construction and future tallest building plans by the UAE, the Burj Khalifa record will be surpassed eventually. Now how about the economics of skyscrapers? I don't expect us to compare the skyscrapers in the Middle East to the skyscrapers in, say, New York, London, or the European market. They're completely built for different purposes. Skyscrapers in the Middle East tend to be built for attraction and tourism. Skyscrapers in the United States and in the European Union, they tend to be built more for economical growth, attracting the right business mindset and the right amount of money to buy these apartments. So to think about the economy of tall buildings, it is convenient to distinguish between drivers of building heights that impact the demand versus those that impact the supply. Urban residents and businesses are willing to pay to be in the tallest buildings because they're centrally located and makes life more convenient. This is from their perspective at least. Hence, developers are willing to build buildings to accommodate this demand. However, constructing taller structures come with extra costs. Taller buildings require more sophisticated structural engineering to withstand wind force, for example, earthquake depending on the region, and more facilities such as elevators. Intuitively, developers build up to the economical height, the point where cost of adding a floor is just equal to the revenue from that floor. Above that height, the extra revenue do not compensate for extra costs. And this is one of the primary reasons why the skyscrapers that are being built by these luxury automakers, they only exceed a certain height. They're not trying to compete with the Burj Khalifa. They're attempting to compete with the common skyscraper height. Now, of course, there are non-economical motives involved in building skyscrapers, similar to the ones that are built in the Middle East. Some buildings stand out as particularly tall relative to the trend and remains relatively tall for a very long time. This has fueled the suspicion that some developers may have non-profit maximizing objectives. And of course, we're well aware of that. Sometimes a skyscraper doesn't itself bring the income. However, what it might bring is something else to the economy of whoever owns said skyscraper. For instance, the Burj Khalifa is actually losing money year after year. However, the attention that it attracts to the entirety of the country makes up for that loss by a long shot. And the UAE has survived on this belief for a very long time. They'll lose some money in certain areas, but those areas are enough to attract the right attention and the right investors to reinvigorate the entire global market. Now for companies like Porsche, Bugatti, something that you might have to keep in mind is that luxury car owners want to live in a luxury lifestyle fashion. So if the company they're buying their luxury cars from can provide them with luxury apartments that go with the car, it means a lot more. This is somewhat similar to the Apple ecosystem. Whenever someone buys an iPhone, guess what? They can also get a laptop, a tablet, and many other devices that Apple has built specifically for the iPhone and Mac ecosystem. People these days, they want an ecosystem. Their life has to be built around an entire style that they've chosen. Luxury car companies are starting to see an opportunity that they could capitalize on. Why just sell the car alone when we could sell you an entire lifestyle? And this lifestyle oftenly starts with your accommodation, your house, where you live. And it is commonplace that rich people usually like to live above the poor. As sad as that is to say but it is however true. That's it for today's video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Subscribe to see more, leave a like, leave a comment, and of course, I will see you in our next video.